Oh, viewers, I don't even know why I call this contingency reviews anymore because it seems to be happening again and again. But uh, yes, due to an unexpected event, I have been given the opportunity to drive this 2020 Ford Fiesta Active 1 litre Active X Edition. And uh, find out in this video why on earth the Ford Fiesta is not currently Britain's best selling car. So the Fiesta Active was launched back in 2018. It's actually based on the Mark 8 Fiesta platform. Very privileged today to be offered this car by fiance of uh, Constable Tom Bailey, who uh, keeps calling herself Mrs. Bailey to be. And uh, this car is absolutely immaculate. It's done 12,000 miles um, in the last two years. These cars are actually worth almost exactly what they were new. I think this is about 23 and a half or 24,000 pounds, this car. The facelifted one that's now out is a little bit more, and that's got different powertrains. But this is the um, one litre with 125 horsepower. It's a little um, three cylinder unit. It's got stop start, um, which is what I'm using at the moment. They're pretty economical engines, these. There's not a lot of displacement in them. The early um, versions of this engine did suffer from these problems. The later ones do seem to be better. Um, but there are lots and lots and lots of powertrains available in this car. The basic one was an 85 brake horsepower version of this unit. There you go, stop start, nice and smooth on this car. So 85 brake horsepower. Um, there was also a 95 brake horsepower version, I think of some of the early models of this. But the most common one, really towards the bottom of the range, will be the 100 horsepower version. That was available with both um, an automatic and a manual gearbox. Then there's this 125. This does an auto 60 in about 10.4 seconds. Or at least that's for 0 to 62 um, mile an hour. This, um, figure I couldn't find one for just 0 to 60. Above that, there was a 140 uh, brake horsepower version of the engine. I keep saying used to be because some of the engines have been actually dropped. Above that is actually a, a, a brand new engine that came in quite recently with the car's facelift. I think it was late 2021, early 2022. And that's a 155 um, mild hybrid engine that's also used in the Ford Puma. As well as that, there is now a mild hybrid version of this engine, the uh, 125. There are also some uh, <coughs> diesels available. But, as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of different reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. What we do talk about is the remarkably kind of smooth and pleasant nature of, of this car. The gearbox is well up to the sort of Ford standard of what we always used to be. And given this has an, an 18mm 18, 18 difference in ride height, it doesn't seem to be that compromised. It's a little bit frigidity over some surfaces, and so possibly not quite as nice as the Mark 7 Fiestas I've driven, but it's not too bad. Steering seems pretty good. It is an electric system in this car, so you can't really expect it to be kind of the last word in dynamism in comparison to some of the older Fiestas that were hydraulic. But it's nice enough. Lloyd Living Consulting stickers, t shirts, and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. So far, I, I can't really find like any major reason why you wouldn't want to buy a Mark 8 Fiesta. Now I didn't cover the entire engine range in 
uh, you know, the bit I've just done, there were some others as well. But those are just for the Fiesta Active. These were, uh, you know, a little bit more than the standard uh, Mark 8 Fiesta, apart from the Vignale, which was very expensive when it was sold. I think that's now um, been discontinued on the Fiesta. But this looks absolutely great. You know, the car's only done 12,000 miles and it's virtually immaculate, this car as well. Um, <laughs> when, it, when it goes back, I think, in a little while, um, at the end of its, uh, its finance deal, it was would be worth a lot of money. Um, that's the way that things go these days. I don't think it's an entirely unsuccessful styling job either. Certainly if we think about the Volkswagen Polo June at Arova Streetwise uh, back in the 2000s, this was very, was very much something at the time when people prefer the sort of slightly chunky styling. And, you know, on these you... Um, you get these roof rails. Well, I think you can get a sunroof. I, I personally would go for a sunroof because it's a little bit dark on the interior, and you'll see in some of the driving section that's to come up. But it does get a little bit, a uh, little bit dark in terms of the light. Boot on these is uh, about 311 litres, being an, an Active X edition model, uh, which was the top of the range car. Um, there, there weren't many trims actually for the Active X. There still aren't. Uh, it's got all round parking sensors and a reversing camera just, just there. Um, it's a 2020 car, this is a personal plate. And actually it's even got the boot liner in here, which is which is great. It very much fits with sort of act, sort of outdoor lifestyle that many of the owners of these will uh, kind of want to put across. So just get this out without doing anything to it. There we go. And we lift this up. There we go. No spare wheel, of course, they're not really in fashion anymore. Um, I think you can get a kit for them. That's personally what I would what I would do if I had one of these cars. But nice, usable space. Uh, bigger than the previous generation Mark 7 Fiesta. Uh, about 25 litres bigger at least, actually. Um, which, is, which is good. The loading height's a little bit high, but it's the case for all cars like this. Corsa, Polo, whatever, whatever you like. So, just get in here. Again, absolutely immaculate in here. Not quite all leather. I think that the facings are genuine leather as opposed to little bits of the seat, which I think is like a cloth. But actually, it's quite, it's quite well trimmed. We do have a rear courtesy light in here. I'm just moving the rear, <laughs> the rear headrest up here, otherwise I won't be able to lean back properly. But yeah, this is, this is the driving position here. I'm about five foot 11. Uh, Becky, who owns this, this car, is a little bit shorter than me, um, so I've had to move a seat a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's actually okay. The headroom's pretty good. Um, I think if you were over six foot, you might struggle slightly. But if you put your knees in there, that's fine. There's enough room to put your feet under the seats as well. A little compartment in here for uh, like a drink or something like that. The only thing which is the same as every other car in this class I've tested, um, Including, including the Polo, of course, we had quite recently, is hard, scratchy plastic. But that's just what you expect, really. There's nothing unusual. Let's see if we can keep that light up. Yeah, getting in and out is pretty easy. Um, the slightly raised right height probably helps in that respect, actually. About 18 millimeters extra ground clearance. This car's got heat entry, so it's absolute top spec, with some options as well, actually, this one. I reckon, yeah, about 23, 24,000 pounds I've been told this car cost when it was new. I might have to mute the radio when it comes on, viewers. Um, you don't want any copyright infringement. Um, that can be a little bit of a problem. Um, but yes, I might just take a, a pause here so I can just sort myself out to make sure that doesn't keep happening. And also we can have this, the screen come on and have the door shut. So just the uh, single zone climate control in here, it's not a huge problem. Thank goodness, actual physical buttons and dials, very big points for me. And also quick clear front windscreen. I can't remember if it's that button or that button. I think it's that button actually for it. Oh no, it's that one, sorry. For many, many years of painted Ford feature, although I've heard that some minis in the mid 2000s also had it there is the heated steering wheel got all kinds of stuff in here just near stratford on an avon 
So if we go into the settings on here, this is uh, I think the Sync 3 system, uh, this one. There's all kinds of other general systems we can look at. Temperature, touchscreen beeps, it's all about the Sync system. And then if we go back, I think we have to press any other systems, there's audio in there, which I think we'll just turn off, we don't want that phone. Yep, there we go, other phones that are connected, navigation. You can see we're just near Stratford on there, which is which is good. What I really want is the car settings. Maybe they're in the other menu, but that's just a general look at the central screen. There we go. We have mobile apps in there. Um, look at all this stuff here. Apple CarPlay vehicle. That's it. Apple CarPlay. I think there's Android Auto on here as well. Valley mode. Interesting. Automatic updates. Wi-Fi. All sorts of stuff. It's a little bit um, slow to sort of respond, actually. Um, it has got Park Pilot, which I am not going to use. If you want, I can um, start the engine, and we're just parked up with a handbrake on. The good as a conventional handbrake, that's what we like to see. And um, I'll just show you the reversing camera whilst we're here, so I don't forget. There we go. It's not bad definition, actually. There's a little picture of Fiesta there. So I'll turn off that. Don't need to run the don't need to run the engine all the time, do we? Fuel is very precious at the moment. So if we look at this the system here, if we can get rid of this alarm system here, we go back. Actually, I, I take a pause at a second here so I can actually get the proper things on this screen rather than the alarm system. Just one second. There we go. Driver assistance. Can we go into that? Oh, maybe it's on this one. There we go. Blind spot monitoring, which this car actually does have. Uh, Pre-collision assistance, traffic sign recognition, lane keeping assistance, a driver attention alert, hill start assist, cross traffic alert at the back. It's actually, actually got adaptive cruise control in this car as well. And um, speed limit. It's got all kinds of things in here. Uh, it's pretty crazy. The navigation you could have on there. Um, that is radio. Uh, we haven't got Bluetooth connected at the moment. And the settings. If we press this button, what happens? Uh, Oh right, we can configure the display. Got tire pressure monitoring, of course. And there's all the sort of driver assistance bits. Maybe we can oh alarm system, 30 minute charm. We've got adaptive lighting, also high beam. Wow. This is just not like a fiesta would have been say 20 years ago, just really, they really weren't, the Mark VI was just out and the top of the range would have been the gear, um, you wouldn't have had all these bits on it, so much advancement in technology. There's the average fuel consumption, about 45 miles per gallon, which really isn't too bad to be honest. Yeah, we're back to the one I think that was on there, which is the um, standard digital speedometer. So very clear to read instruments, actually got a proper temperature gauge and a fuel gauge in here, uh, automatic Lights, I think, are down there. That's right, there we go. Automatic lights. Auto wipers in this as well. Right, settle down light level. There we go. Uh, there's all the, the settings that we've been playing with, including the telephone. And then ad adaptive cruise control, which is just on there, which uh, dead fancy for something like this. There's actually different driving modes on here. We've got the... Um, sort of eco one and then there's one for snow and there's one for racing. I don't know why you want to go kind of racy but if I use this switch here, eco sport, I mean I don't, not much sporty driving to be had in a Fiesta Active, you want an ST for that don't you? Uh, slippery trail, now it's only a front wheel drive car, there is no four wheel drive available but if you really wanted to, it's similar to grip control that's used in some other models I think. Uh, we'll just put it back onto, onto eco, there we go. Uh, want to save fuel, don't we? Right, let's uh, see if the glove box takes my secret mission documents. <sighs> no. No, it does not. That's annoying. What's nice, though, is actually you could maybe see there. This has got a Bang & Olufsen stereo in it, which is nice. There's actually a, a special uh, B&O model of the Active. Cup holders down there and whatever that's for, I'm not sure what that'll be for. I even got um, a little place in here, a little tray to put your things in before you want to keep hidden things at the bottom of there. 
like actual gloves. Right, um, I think I'm nice to look at the sunglasses holder. Hmm, gloves in the Santa cubby here, sunglasses in there, and nothing in the sunglasses holder. Peculiar. Right, I think it's time, whilst taking in the heated seat controls here, that we uh, take a look at the engine. So this is the one litre EcoBoost engine, in this case generating 125 horsepower. This isn't the mild hybrid version, that didn't come until the uh, facelift, which is very recent. Only three cylinders, so less oil, less spark plugs, all that kind of stuff. Um, Pretty complicated though, even without the mild hybrid system, I'd better move out of the way so you get my shadow in there. Um, but for a modern engine, this is what they're sort of like. And the sort of general things, things like the, the coolant reservoir, rinsing washer fluid, dipstick, or for the cap, um, they're all sort of easy to reach. Right, let's um, go for another drive, I suppose. It feels very, very grown up. It's very refined in here. Um, there's very little noise of any nature. You can't even really hear this little three cylinder engine. Certainly, the steering, although it is an electric setup, does have a little bit of weighting to it. Not so much in terms of feel, I don't think, because it's all artificial anyway, but the weighting is actually very good. Compared with uh, something like um, Volkswagen Polo, uh, which came out, I think, the same year as these did, the current generation anyway. It, um, it, feels, it feels very, very good. Brakes are very sharp. Nice turn in. Very smooth engine. It's very much like the Volkswagen Wallington TSI unit that's in everything as well. Obviously this engine is used in all kinds of other Ford models. And I understand why I... I'm just still waiting to be convinced that they've actually fixed these problems that they had um, with the earlier versions of this engine. But if you're only going to buy one of these on a sort of like a three year lease, I don't think you have any issues really. Anyway, let's... Um, take this little car back and uh, draw some conclusions about it, shall we? Do you know what, viewers? I quite like this, uh, this car. I know they're quite expensive, they're not even more expensive with the facelift. But I can see why somebody might want one of these. You get a little bit extra um, ground clearance, you do get this slightly more chunky styling. This particular car, being the X edition, is incredibly well equipped. It's quite nice to drive. I'm not sure I've found out the reason why they don't sell many Fiestas anymore. I don't really understand, but maybe that's something that you can put in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of Contingency Reviews. Thank you for um, Constable and Mrs. Bailey to be um, for lending me this car and uh, we'll see you again soon for more last minute videos.